good afternoon everyone uh, thank you uh, dr pau and uh, other colleagues for the invitation for this 15th uh, lecture in this series on the right stuff uh, and uh, as a part of this presentation uh, which is more or less based on uh, scattering and diffraction i have summarized uh, our recent results which are based on functionalized coherent organic frameworks for photocatalytic hydrogen generation so in first half of my half of my presentation i would like to introduce uh, all of you with the uh, coherent organic frameworks its characterization and its properties and uh, in the in the last uh, in, in the last uh, part of my presentation i would be showing the applications of these uh, wonderful materials for photocatalytic hydrogen generation especially uh, hydrogen generation uh, in water spreading so uh, when it comes to the porosity and porous materials according to the iupac classifications these materials can be classified into macroporous mesoporous and microporous materials depending on the what uh, kind of pore size these materials have and uh, when it comes to the synthesis of these materials uh, generally macroporous and mesoporous materials are getting synthesized by direct templating and uh, the second option of uh, and which is mostly used is also blo block copolymer self assembly and what has been seen is that uh, by using direct templating as well as block copolymer as self assembly the repetitive synthesis of macroporous and mesoporous material can be achieved uh, but when it comes to the synthesis of microporous materials actually this method doesn't give the re reproducible results because now we are just dealing with the pore size which is just 20 angstrom which is very hard to uh, control as well as precisely um, manipulate according to the necessity of any functions so in this regards uh, these materials are generally synthesized by direct synthesis so what i mean by direct synthesis means these materials are getting synthesized by the coordination of uh, metal uh, metallic uh, centers with organic linkers to form for example metal organic frameworks and this the same case when it comes to the zeolites where uh, silicon and uh, uh, aluminum are coordinated via oxygen in between but when it comes to the synthesis of organic materials such as uh, covalent organic frameworks porous polymers porous organic cages and their covalent attachment of organic one organic linker with the other gives out the mm, porous and porous materials which may or may not be crystalline uh, uh, and most importantly when it comes to the synthesis of microporous materials these materials are getting more and more attention recently because these materials have very high surface area they have very high pore volume and uh, they have multiple application for example storage catalysis so on and so forth but when it comes to the type of materials we generally know inorganic materials such as zeolites and the very recently known materials as the uh, organic materials such as uh, covalent organic frameworks and porous polymers which are been synthesized very recently another in you know, another uh, class of materials but among these materials as we all of us know zeolite which has been known from years are purely inorganic materials whereas corps and uh, microporous organic polymers are considered as uh, purely organic materials and there is a class of materials which are uh, sandwiching in between those these two classes which is uh, metal organic frameworks where metal clusters uh, coordinate with organic linkers forming the porous and crystalline materials which are called as metal organic frameworks as per their components and due to this crystallinity high porosity surface area Uh, as well as uh, the uh, tunable pore sizes metallonic frameworks are getting much more attention nowadays so uh, how does this material generally getting synthesized so in general metallonic frameworks start uh, uh, starts getting synthesized by coordination of metal clusters with organic linkers which in first point gives the elementary unit which we generally call as a secondary building unit sbus which goes on extending into three dimensional forming the porous and crystalline metal organic frameworks into three dimension and these uh, these properties of these materials can be tuned by changing the metals or organic linkers as per necessity of the application but uh, how does this happen in a solution so in a solution organic linkers start coordinating with the metal clusters Uh, and uh, with increasing time they start uh, extending to the three dimensional leaving out some pores which can be used to do multiple uh, applications as well as different chemistry in their backbone before they crystallized out as a single crystal and very beautiful crystals which can be analyzed using single crystal xrds 
And most importantly, in this case, what happens uh, since this material leave out the porosity <coughs> in this uh, during the synthesis, this uh, many kind of application can be used uh, can be done using metallurgy frameworks. But the most important point over here is that coordination of metals with organic linkers gives out the framework which are crystalline and called as metallurgy frameworks. But can anyone so think of uh, having the covalent organic frameworks where framework is crystalline, framework is ordered, but the overall material is ordered, just made, made it from the organic linkers. So the background was in 1916, the Lewis theory gave us out that molecules can be synthesized or molecules can be assembled together through different atoms. For example, this is a boronic acid molecule which can be assembled together by six carbon, two boron, four oxygen, and eight hydrogens through the shared electrons. That is what Lewis theory gave us in 1916. So it was possible to uh, convert the atoms into molecules, which was explained very nicely at that time. But after that, there was no, not much progress of extension of molecules into the frameworks. Of course, it was done in the polymers, but in a crystalline and ordered framework. So the question arises over here, can the formation of porous and crystalline cops achieved from discrete molecules? And I'm not talking about the polymers here, the materials which are crystalline, which are ordered, which are long range ordering. But what happens in general, when we start any reaction and start assembling different organic molecules together through different uh, cross coupling reaction, for example, in this case, uh, this tetrakis 4 bromophenylmethane starts uh, 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 covalently attachment with each, each others through Yamamoto coupling, it gives the porous material, which is having high surface area, which is chemically stable, possible to synthesize in bulk. But as clear from this particular PX30 pattern, you can clearly see that this material would not be, this material is not at all having any order in its backbone. It is just amorphous material. So you can synthesize the material using different organic molecules, but they, they don't have any kind of ordering in between. So now you don't know exactly which centers lies where, what kind of pores these materials have. Of course, surface area and then porosity analysis can give you pore size distribution, but which is not that precise. Practically, this material should have an ideal structure if it gets into crystallized form, which is more or less looks like this, but uh, since there were no synthetic conditions applied, which can give the crystalline material, this material was completely, completely amorphous. And this is the PXRD pattern of the simulated material. This is the experimental PXRD pattern. There is no at all match showing that this is amorphous material. But this is not the only example. As we know, all of us know, PIMS, which are membrane forming microprose polymers, uh, has been applied uh, for many years for the membrane separation and many technologies. So these are another class of polymers, as well as there are a lot many polymers which have been synthesized using different cross coupling reactions as Suzuki, Yamamoto, Sonogishira, so on and so forth. But most of these materials have either very less uh, ordering or no at all ordering in, in, in their backbone. So at that point, it is really important to understand what will happen and what are those conditions which need to be understood when we have to synthesize some organic linkers, uh, when we have to synthesize some organic framework which have the crystallinity as well as the ordering in their backbone. And this could be two, two, two different type of materials that could be two dimensional COPs or three dimensional covalent organic frameworks. That means two dimensional COP having layer, layered structure as well as three dimensional COP where there is unlimited, uh, uh, there is a three dimensional connectivity in their backbone. But what is the difference between these two materials as well as these two materials? Here there is no ordering. But in this case, there should be some ordering. And how can we induce this ordering? So to do that, it was thought that when we start assembling organic monomers together, they should first form the oligomers, which would go, give us out the bigger oligomers before it forms the thermally and chemically stable covalent organic framework. But how can you achieve that? So simple in a, uh, in a synthetic scheme like this. But the first thought came in the mind: can we use some reversible reaction there are so many of those in uh, organic chemistry. So what will happen in first place, this, this kind of organic molecules start interacting with each other covalently, and they will first give the oligomers. There are so many defects in these materials which can be corrected by going back and forth under some stimuli. And stimuli could, uh, could be solvents, stimuli could be temperature, stimuli could be pressure. And by using those stimuli, you can correct the errors. 
And once you have more um, defined materials, then more and more cor correction happens in this, in this uh, oligomers. And finally, it gives the materials which have long range ordering, which have porosity, which have crystallinity. So by applying some synthetic condition, definite uh, reaction parameters, including solvent, temperature, pressure, it is possible to synthesize the coherent ordering framework having a long range ordering. But it is not that easy as we think of. So in 2005, the group of Professor uh, Omar Yagi first time thought that by assen assembling three C2 type linkers or two C3 plus C3 linkers or one C3 and one C2 type linker, it may be possible to synthesize the honeycomb type of structures uh, which should be crystalline ideally if we have to call them as a coherent ordering frameworks. To do that, what they did was in first point, they did the monomer synthesis using boronic acid trimerization reaction. So this is a reversible reaction where boronic acid react, three boronic acid molecules react with each other, leaving out three water molecules forming boroxane anhydride in a model compound. But later, when we have diboronic acid um, and there are some synthetic condition temperature and then there would be some water removal, which will act as a stimuli in this, in this material to drive the reaction back and forth before it gives you COP1 as a crystalline and porous material. So similarly, the same group has also showed that um, boronic acid start react, reacts with the catechol kind of compounds, giving out monomer, which is a boronic ester uh, reaction, which is known in the organic chemistry from years. And here also the removal of water can trigger the reaction to the more towards the part of the crystallinity. So but this in this uh, particular uh, example, they showed that diboronic acid can react with such kind of HST molecule, uh, which leaves out water behind and forms a COP5, which should have this kind of connectivity. And ideally, this material should have a pore size of 27 and so So by applying reversible reaction, uh, this group for the first time showed that COPs can be synthesized in crystalline form, but how did they characterize it? So all of you are more or less known about this particular patterning. So this was the PX30 pattern of this material as synthesized. And what they did to check what kind of material have been synthesized, they first went to the, uh, uh, they, they did some simulation using material studio where they had two models, maybe material could be eclipsed or material could be staggered. And they optimize the cell parameters. For example, in this condition, this is carbon, all six carbon of the benzene ring, uh, boron, oxygen, and then this is boron trim uh, boronic acid trimerization uh, monomer, which extends into three dimensional form in the framework. But in this case, what they observed was there could be two possibilities. One is formation of eclipse structure where all the layers are stacked on top of each other, but other could be even staggered structure as well. So in this case, they, uh, calculated the PX30 patterns for material studio optimized structures and what they found was this particular structure of COP1 which has been synthesized as I showed in previous slide shows uh, formation of crystalline material but it is a staggered structure whereas when it comes to the synthesis of uh, COP5 they had completely different PX30 patterns where they have seen that there is a peak for one zero zero reflection which shows honeycomb kind of structure there are other reflections as well, but most importantly, there is a peak around 25 uh, to theta degree, which represents the pi pi stepping, stacking among the layers. So in this case, they have a purely uh, crystalline as well as eclipse structure, which have a pore size very close to the uh, parameters which they have expected during the synthesis. And in addition to the PX30 patterns, they had also analyzed this material using FTIR as well as 13C solid state NMR analysis, and they could clearly confirm that formation of these crystalline as well as porous material uh, using some synthetic condition. Otherwise, this material could be some porous polymers without any ordering in, in their backbone. But then again, there would be so many questions floating around. Are there just only two possibilities having structure which is staggered or eclipsed? No, there could be multiple possibilities which could be eclipse, staggered, serrated, or inclined, depending on the how this layer can organize each others. And can we analyze and can we correctly refine the COP materials to this particular different patterns? So at first it was sensed to be really difficult, but later in, in, in few days, few years later, the group of Thomas Heine has uh, correctly showed that 
PX30 patterns of COPS, uh, which are uh, experimental, uh, experimentally observed, uh, analyzed using PX30 uh, analysis, can be compared with different models. And here they could clearly assign that these materials, which are synthesized by using boronic acid trimerization, trimerization boron ester reaction formation, have uh, eclipsed structures which are not completely eclipsed. So in these cases, structures are either serrated or inclined where each one of these layer is, uh, is shifted by 1.4 angstrom. So now it becomes more interesting because previously what was thought that, you know, there could be just possibilities of <clears throat> determined structure which could be eclipsed or staggered. But even going beyond that one, it is also possible to uh, track the minute changes in the structure using the uh, computational methods. Generally, material studio helps a lot in this procedure. So uh, material which has been synthesized in crystalline and porous form can be uh, characterized very well using the diffraction patterns. So this is one of the technique which has given a lot of um, advantage to the uh, researchers working in this particular area. And most importantly, recently, uh, the same group of Professor Yagi has showed that using uh, aniline as an inhibitor during this COP synthesis reaction, you can even get the single crystalline material. But the only limitation of this method is this method has just applied for the three-dimensional material. In particular, uh, this particular coherent organic framework uh, using this tetramine C4 type of tetramine linker uh, and this BDA, they could get the single crystalline COP which have some crystal, crystal, small crystals like this and it was analyzed using single crystal XRD. So, and in this particular case, it was much important that they could even get the how water molecule can have the interaction with amine, nitrogen, and so on and so, so forth with much more details uh, in this case. But this is just restricted to three-dimensional structures, but in two-dimensional structures also minor details can be tracked and traced using uh, computational models and comparing the two patterns which are firstly got by PXRD as well as another one extracted from the simulated structures. So since all of these structures can be characterized very well, very down the line in just few years, after the first two successful COPs in 2005, there are a series of reactions which has been utilized. And if you observe closely, all of these reactions are mostly reversible reaction. In our group, we have showed that primerization of cyano compounds can give the coherent rising frameworks. Imine-based reaction, which generally we call as a sheet-based reaction, can be utilized. And then polyimide reaction, as well as hydrogen formation reaction can also be used. And very recently, uh, it has been shown that the frameworks which have all carbon in their backbone can be synthesized uh, using cyanovinyl or olefin linkages as well. And now we have different materials, but COPs have some different, you know, some important advantages which have unlimited chem chemical tunability. For example, you change one of the amine linker and you will get a different COP which have different properties. So now you can get a different materials with different properties just by changing one of the linker and that could be diamine or triamine. So you have unlimited chemical tenability. Secondly, these materials are crystalline and they have uh, the ordering in their backbone. So that means you exactly know, the, know that where exactly particular group or particular moiety has been sitting and what kind of structure this material has. They are rigid. Rigid means once you install something in this backbone or once you introduce some of the functionalities in the backbone, they, they remain still in there. So that is advantage for the people working in the catalysis. They have low density because most of these materials have been synthesized in boron, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, very light elements. So they have low density in more or less time. And they have high permanent porosity because once these materials get formed, except few exceptions, these materials are uh, porous and they are, these layers are completely been uh, locked with each other, leaving out high porosity behind. And lastly, but most important part is these materials are chemically as well as thermally stable which is important for multiple applications in a, in a regular life. So after having these much properties, recently these materials have been applied for multiple applications, starting from gas storage, gas separation, uh, as well as some of these materials have been applied for the chiral catalysis. Uh, we and even others have even showed that application of these materials for the uh, metal nanoparticle loading to, uh, to do some catalysis which could be uh, going for the organic transformation reaction, as well as few materials have been used for optoelectronics 
and energy storage using super capacitor as well as lithium and battery. And by this time when I was uh, working in Thieu Berlin, the most striking property which was going in all the time in the mind was these cops have rigid, rigidity as well as porosity in their backbone. So what does that give us idea? Since these materials are rigid and porous, so these materials should show uh, rapid diffusion of the charges because now these layers are ordered and then these charges can transfer from these discrete channels. And due to the high porosity, there should be high interaction between the materials, coherent organic frameworks with the electrolytes as well as other components such as metal centers and complexes as well. And most importantly, once you install some of the moieties, for example, triazine in coherent triazine frameworks, they will remain there forever, uh, avoiding the formation of dimers. So these properties are more or less really important for the photocatalysis. And particularly when I'm talking about the photocatalysis, I will be talking about the photocatalytic water splitting, where uh, solar energy is converted into the, uh, solar energy is used to split the water in presence of co-catalyst and sacrificial electron donors sometimes to give out the pure hydrogen, which can be used in the, in the fuel cell for fuel cell and multiple vehicular applications as well. So importantly, I will not be talking about uh, inorganic photocatalysis because it's something else, but when it comes to organic photocatalysis, this field was started after the first discovery of carbon nitrate, which are semi-crystalline materials. And this material has shown the promise for the photocatalytic water splitting uh, using uh, atmospheric conditions. And uh, in presence of some co-catalyst, uh, with or without co-catalyst, I would say. And after carbon nitride, some of the coherent triazine frameworks, linear polymers, porous polymers have also been applied over the time for this photocatalytic water split. And very recently, coherent organic frameworks also been applied uh, for this particular application. So, in more details, my colleague Sophie, uh, who started working on this particular project, and she synthesized coherent triazine framework using cyanotrimerization reaction in just 30 minutes time heating. And what, what she could achieve was, the material which have been having structures and there are these triazine moieties in their backbone, which are, which are electron deficient, act as electron, uh, electron sink uh, when they are applied for the photocatalysis. They showed efficient hydrogen generation over the time, and this is, very, very uh, efficient. And secondly, this material can show the uh, hydrogen uh, generation over multiple hours. And they have analyzed it is for at least 60 hours and beyond that, but there's no drop in the activity. You have to just go on adding the co-catalyst as well as the uh, sacrificial electron donor sometimes. Not only this, but uh, the group of Professor uh, Betana Losh, they have showed that uh, the triazine containing organic linkers can be implied to the synthesize the coherent organic framework, which show efficient hydrogen generation. Most importantly, the hydrogen generation properties in these materials are dependent on number of nitrogens in their backbone. And triazine based material show the highly efficient as well as recyclable um, water splitting properties. But when we look into these results, most of the time, this chemistry was playing around triazine, heptazine, nitrogen rich material, and so on and so forth. So at this particular point, I thought, can we extend this chemistry beyond this particular point? And I came across one of the interesting molecule uh, wherein diastyl moiety, moieties were installed in this small molecule. And particularly when they were checked for charge and hole transfer property, this material showed the uh, efficient uh, uh, hole transfer properties. And when these diastyl moieties were installed in polymers, which are generally linear polymers, they showed the dye degradation with high efficiency, close to 80%. And I was surprised that just a small moiety can change this much into these materials. So at that point, we decided, can we install these moieties? Can we incorporate these moieties in the coherent organic frameworks? And how can we do that? So to do that, we synthesized two amines, one having acetylene moieties, and other one was having the diacetylene moieties. And we started reacting these uh, organic linkers with 135-triformifluoroglucinol, which is aldehyde, and we followed a ship-based reaction, uh, which undergoes a ket ketonal tautomerization in 1-prodioxone mesetylene as a solvent, acetic acid as a catalyst, 120 degrees Celsius, as Celsius for four days, and finally you will get such kind of material, uh, which is in purely crystalline form as well as porosity. And in this case, we synthesize a diacetylene containing cop, which is uh, here on our call as TPBDDA, as well as we had also synthesized the TPDD cop, which is having acetylene moieties. But 
first job what we did was we optimized the structures and what we found that uh, cop having uh, diacetyl moieties should have the pore size of 3.4 nanometer and cop having diacetyl moieties should have the pore size of um, 3 nanometer uh, and this material should be crystalline if we, we could have optimized the conditions correctly. So first characterization what we did was the PXRD analysis and what we observed that these materials have good crystallinity and to analyze the uh, whether structure is eclipsed or staggered we optimized the structures in material studio extracted the PXRD patterns and this sim we compared the simulated PXRD patterns with the experimental PXRD patterns and as we see that there is very a minute difference in these both PXRD patterns, which confirms the formation of this material into hexagonal P6 phase group with these cell parameters. And similarly, it was also been observed for the TPB day of having diastole moieties. So we were really happy at that particular moment because now we have a COP which have acetyl moieties and we have another COP with diastole moieties in the backbone. However, the porosity, which is another prime uh, properties of the coherent organic frameworks. So as expected, the diastyl cop uh, having the pore size of 3.4 nanometers showed the surface area of say 156 meters square per gram and uh, uh, the smaller pore size sized TPEDDA showed the surface area of 523 meters square per gram which was expected because of the smaller pore size and later we did the FTIR as well as uh, solid state carbon NMR analysis and what we found that uh, during this whole reaction synthetic conditions as well as um, uh, purification of the materials all of these moieties acetylene and diacetylene remains intact immune bond is still intact in these materials confirming the formation of crystalline porous as well as uh, functionalized with acetylene and diacetylene uh, moieties materials so now we had the materials which are crystalline as i said earlier which were porous there were uh, presence of acetylene and diacetylene moieties and we thought, can we apply this material for photocatalytic hydrogen generation? And to do that, we were even more intrigued. And what we thought that we have a COP, which have acetyl moieties. We have another COP, we have diacetyl moieties. But there are some basic nitrogen atoms which from the immune linkages. So how to nullify that effect? And to have a fair comparison, we have also synthesized a COP using terpenyl linkage. And in this case, we have applied the more or less similar condition. And what we found that the COP which has uh, have the terpenyl moieties is highly crystalline as well as it has even more surface area as compared to the other two counterparts. So now we have three COPs which are having acetylene, diacetylene and phenyl moieties. And to apply this material for the photocatalysis, we first went to the to do the UV visible analysis of these COPs. So this is how this material looks, which is pretty distinct from each other's and uh, when we did the UV, UV visible analysis solid state, we found that the TPBDD COP having diacetylene moieties in, in their backbone, it not only shows the absorption in more in the visible region, but it have lower band gap as well. So practically, when you introduce the, these diacetylene moieties, it has started absorbing more in the visible region, as well as it, it has showed the lower band gap. Whereas the TPBDD COP having acetylene moieties showed the bit uh, higher band gap as compared to the BDDA and TPDTP with only phenyl rings in there have the highest band gap which is 2.42 electron hold in all. So in UV it was clear that these materials are absorbing in invisible region. So now it was a time to analyze the, the photocatalytic hydrogen generation using this, this coherent organic framework. So what we did, we had this uh, setup in our lab wherein we can do the analysis in both ways, in line as well as using this kind of small reactor as well. We use the Genon lamp uh, with 394, uh, 395 nanometer wave lamp. And uh, to execute this analysis, we use 10 milligram of the catalyst. We, we took the 20 ml of the water TUA solution in 9 to 1 uh, proportion. Here TUA acts as a triethanol amine acts as a sacrificial electron donor and here we also use the 3 weight percent of the platinum as the co-catalyst and when we applied uh, suitable conditions during this photocatalytic react setup we observed that the COP which have the diastyl moieties shows the epicent hydrogen generation so in, in here uh, y-axis shows the hydrogen evolution rate uh, whereas the x-axis shows the time uh, with which we have went on so in this aspect and the COP which have the diastyl moieties in the background showed the highest hydrogen generation properties 
as compared to the other two counterparts and the rate was almost 325 micromole per hour per gram of the catalyst and what we believe that uh, beside the lowering of band gaps as well as the high charge current mobility in this diacetylene uh, based the cop uh, the the passive migration which has been showed by these diacetylene moieties which carries this photo ex, uh, photo generated extrans to the surface that actually helps a lot for the efficient water splitting using cops but not 100% questions were answered. Someone might ask that, okay, how do we know that we're, whatever hydrogen is coming out that is just from the water and not for the corrosion of the catalyst itself. So to analyze that, we did the D2 experiment, labeling experiment using D2 in place of water. And what we observed, there is just exclusive generation of the D2 and there is not at all hydrogen coming out, confirming the uh, whatever hydrogen is coming out that is from the water, not from the uh, corrosion of the catalyst. And the last question which need to be answered was, how does the uh, durability of these materials? So since diacetylene based cop was highly efficient, we utilize these materials and we analyze the uh, hydrogen evolution properties of this material over the time. So we at least analyze for 80 hours and what we need to do is that uh, for 20 hours, uh, this uh, TPBDDA cop shows the efficient hydrogen generation after which due to the, uh, since all of the TUA gets exhausted, we have to add a fresh aliquotrope TUA and then again this material starts uh, uh, generating hydrogen again with more or less similar rates showing the durability of this material. So in this particular um, whole exercise what we analyzed was the crystalline and porous covalent ordering framework which have uh, long range ordering can be utilized for the water splitting uh, because now it is very easier to transfer this uh, trans transfer these photo generator excitons among the layers to the surface for catalyzing the reaction. Okay, so this was very nice, everything went well, and but we were always been concerned about one thing over here was all of these materials have the carbon nitrogen bond, which is generally called as labile bond, and which is not that stable, although there are a lot many COPs which are coming nowadays which have high chemical stability. But in this particular case, we were thinking that okay, how can we avoid this particular aspect of uh, compromising the stability of these materials? So meanwhile, what happened was uh, there were a couple of reports in the literature wherein uh, nominal gel condensation reaction using this CH2 active compound with aldehyde was showed to the synthesis of a couple of covalent organic frameworks. So in this case, uh, this 1,4-phenylene diacetonitrile was coordinated with covalently attached with this kind of uh, aldehydes to synthesize the covalent organic frameworks. Now, more interestingly, these materials don't have any nitrogen carbon inside. So this would be even more stable in a way when we need to think about some of the catalytic applications as well. But not only that, but a few groups have already showed that uh, due to this fully conjugated network and as well as high stability, these materials showed the enhanced photocatalytic application and energy storage properties as compared to the other counterparts like boronic acid as well as imine cops. But at this particular point, what we were uh, we were thinking about that even we say that these bonds are uh, these are like fully conjugated material but somehow these carbon nitrogen bonds are not fully symmetrical so we thought can we make these uh, bonds even more symmetrical just carbon double bond carbon and more importantly these uh, cyano groups are always labile they undergo the click reaction as well as they go to the uh, they can convert it into the carboxylic acids so and so forth so to avoid that we thought that can we try to remove these uh, cyano groups from these materials, not after the synthesis, but can we have the material which don't have any, un uh, any uh, unsymmetrical carbon-carbon uh, bonds, but just the symmetrical bonds. But while browsing through the literature, what we came across was this was already been observed in some of the materials which are very interesting class of material which are called as polyphenylene vinylene PPV. And this material, because of this full conjugation, they have shown some of the diamagnetic properties as well as they have interesting, intrinsic electrical conductivity as well. And due to these properties, because of high conductivity as well as their properties, uh, more towards the diamagnetic, these materials are even applied for the LEDs as well as in the solar cells as well. So this was interesting. Now, if you have a material which would have just plain symmetrical CC bond, it could be useful for many applications which have not been thought of uh, at this point as well. But we went once one step higher and what we thought, can we have a material which have this kind of bonding 
as well as some of the trials in monkeys, which would be even interesting for multiple applications. And when it comes to the triazine based, we are already, as I discussed earlier, we uh, already uh, have expertise in coherent triazine frameworks, as well as uh, in our lab, we are generally uh, very known with the triazine based graphitic carbon nitride, as well as some of the poly, uh, polytriazine emid networks as well, which have been applied for multiple photocatalytic application. The basic of all of these materials is the triazine moieties. So we thought to include this triazine moieties into this fully conjugated, conjugated carbon-carbon bonds. But how can we do that? To do that, we thought that we can use some of the uh, linker, like trimethyl triazine, where due to this electron deficient nature of the uh, nitrogen, these CH3 groups are already active, which can be coordinated with the any aldehydes. So this is a typical aldol condensation reaction in presence of base or acid. And this should go in this particular way. Base can abstract the proton, and it can have the stabilized carbonion, which can coordinate with the aldehyde, forming the monomers. We did the first, we checked uh, monomer formation, and it works pretty well. So now we were, sir, we were now even more interested, like how, how would this happen in a framework? So to do that, we used, again, trimethyl triazine. And in this particular case, the uh, acidic terminal methyl hydrogens of this trimethyl triazine uh, we are first abstracted by base since we use the NaOH here uh, and uh, the resulting carbonion in this particular whole reaction was uh, further stabilized and it can undergo the aldol condensation reaction using different aldehyde. So using trimethyl triazine plus terephthalate, we have reticulated the COP, phi COP1 and using this kind of C3 linker, we have even reticulated phi COP2. And interestingly, now you can clearly see that how crystalline are these materials now. So we have all particular peaks which can show, we have one zero zero peak showing the hexagonal uh, honeycomb fiber kind of structure. We have fiber stacking, which is very clear in this particular pattern, uh, at least particularly for the VCOP one. And when we analyze the, uh, the structures as compared to the simulated patterns, we found that these materials are fully eclipsed and he have the simulated, uh, have the structure in AA pattern, uh, which is more or less same case for the VCOP two as well. So. As I said earlier, now we have the materials. There are triazine moieties in their backbone. There is a symmetrical carbon-carbon bond. And how about the porosity of these materials? So in addition to, addition to the crystallinity, these materials have very high surface area, close to 1400 meters square per gram, which is uh, typically close to the theoretical surface area of, of that particular material as well. So material which are crystalline, porous, and have the triazine moieties in their backbone, and we went one step ahead and thought that, okay, can we check the uh, absorption properties in the light? And then what we found that uh, this particular VCOP1 was having uh, light absorption in the visible region. And the last part, as we were interested, we applied this material for the photocatalytic hydrogen generation. And what we observed was this material also show very efficient as well as the uh, recyclable photocatalytic hydrogen generation. Uh, and the in this particular project, what we thought, uh, what we learned was the the symmetrical CC bond, as well as the presence of uh, triazine uh, moieties in their backbone, is responsible for the uh, efficient photocatalytic hydrogen generation from water at normal conditions. Except these as as well, we are also interested into other type of uh, catalysis. So, in addition to the photocatalytic water splitting, these materials have even been applied for the heterogeneous catalysis as well as OER, as well as uh, recently we have even showed the uh, radical polymerization using coherent organic frameworks, which are more or less related to photocatalysis as well as catalytic application. So finally, I would like to summarize. Uh, I hope I have convinced all of you that by applying reversible conditions, crystalline and porous COPs can be prepared. Uh, later, uh, introduction of diacetyl moieties in the COP backbone showed the e efficient photocatalytic hydrogen generation. And lastly, minimally linked and fully conjugated COPs show promise for uh, as a photocatalyst for water spreading. With this, I would like to uh, uh, acknowledge my supervisor, Professor Arne Thomas, who has supported for all of this project, my group members, uh, Professor Ryan Schumacher and uh, Professor Michael for the support in the photocatalytic hydrogen generation, Amit for uh, helping in the, all the photocatalytic properties. I would like to thank Alexander Van Humboldt Foundation for uh, financial support. UNICEF's CATFIC for my current um, fellowship, 
and TU Berlin for the all, we, all the infrastructure and support. And thank you all for your kind attention. And I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you.